that uh, you were crawling out of it. Um, I have to say that um, looked at objectively, um, I would stress that Japan is the third economic power in the world, uh, the third strongest economy in the world. Um, in my time in Japan, uh, which is admittedly some years ago, uh, the good, good old days. The good old days. Yeah. Uh, they weren't such good old days because the same kind of thing was being said, and um, uh, in, in particular in the Western media, uh, the question was always um, the. Uh, slough of despond that the Japanese economy was in, the stagnation that you talked about. My own view always uh, during the uh, almost four years I spent in Japan is that I, I wished we had the problems of Japan. <laughs> um, the emergence of China, of course, uh, is um, the uh, perhaps biggest uh, uh, historical development uh, of the last 30 years in uh, the Asia-Pacific region, and you have um, very well sketched out the um, problems uh, that this uh, throws up, um, not least the possibility that the uh, economic uh, growth might stall, which would bring uh, social problems within China itself, and perhaps uh, aggravate the kind of problems like uh, you, those that you have mentioned, the Senkaku Islands and the South China Sea. Uh, it's something that I think we are all very conscious of. Um, North Korean belligerence um, is something that, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we have uh, been very well aware of uh, in uh, recent months. Uh, China has leverage there, as you say, but um, uh, no doubt the situation is very d difficult. As for the US, um, uh, I think that the description you give of uh, a 180 degree turn in uh, US uh, policy towards Japan is no doubt uh, good news. Um, I think there are many other uh, aspects of the new American administration where um, a 180 degree turn is not yet evident. Um, very interesting what you say about the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, we'll have to see what happens there. And finally on Russia, um, the Northern Territories is of course a very long standing sore point between Japan and Russia. And if I understand you correctly to say that uh, patience will be called for, I think it's the least one can say. So thank you very much for uh, this uh, oversight of uh, the situation in the uh, Asia-Pacific region. Uh, we would, uh, I'm sure you would, uh, Ambassador, welcome any questions or comments. Uh, Paddy Smith from the, from the Irish Times. We've seen in, in recent weeks a remarkable change in, in uh, Trump's attitude to, towards China, and apparently it's manifest in uh, military terms in that he is less willing in the last few days to, uh, to see uh, uh, American ships in the South China Sea. And that there's been a, uh, a visible uh, uh, pulling back by the Americans of their, their attitude to, to China. Uh, and we've also seen, because of the collapse of, 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 of TPP, an attitude taken by some of the uh, regional powers, regional uh, countries, that. Uh, uh, is beginning to look uh, to China as the leader uh, in the in the region, and I just wondered if you, you would comment on on that uh, reality, if you like, that China is is actually again beginning to be seen as as an alternative center of power um, in the post TPP environment and the and the, the changing security environment. Uh, no, United States, partly because Japan, many of Asian countries have uh, not thought Japan was qualified because uh, of our recent history, like uh, South China or uh, South uh, Korea or North Korea or China. Many countries do not share their belief or institution one-party system, human rights, uh, democracy. I don't think 
China is seen as the leader. They don't of uh, other Asian countries in that sense. So that is why many countries looked towards the United States and wanted the US to be engaging in Asia. And I think that has not fundamentally changed. Uh, uh, of course, uh, I said uh, some of the countries have uh, difficulty with us, but uh, many of the other countries, ASEAN countries or uh, other Indian, India or whoever doesn't have this, but it's true that some countries still have that kind of feeling. And China, I think many of the countries, although don't say, have uh, some distance towards China, although they economically are closely tied. And I think uh, uh, as long as that has, is not changing, I think many of the Asian countries would like the United States to stay. And uh, uh, I think uh, it's uh, US is uh, realizing its role. Uh, it's, uh, I said uh, they have changed 180 degrees uh, towards Japan, but they have 180 degrees changed uh, its at, uh, saying towards uh, NATO. Uh, when uh, uh, during campaign he was saying that NATO is obsolete, but uh, now on January the 27th uh, he said to visiting uh, Mrs. May that uh, NATO is the important, import, most important ally and. Uh, uh, on Iran deal uh, during the uh, election campaign, Mr. Trump was saying this is the silliest uh, accord, but uh, Mr. Tillerson said to NATO that the uh, United States will honor it. Uh, and uh, on China, uh, Mr. Uh, Trump said during the election that uh, uh, China is making a, a, a trade uh, uh, deficit on United States uh, manipulating currency, so he may have to re rethink about one China policy. But uh, now, uh, on uh, February the 9th, he called uh, Mr. Xi Jinping and said, China, uh, US is committed to one China policy. So 180 degrees is not only towards Japan, but for most of the uh, foreign policies, he may not admit it, but uh, he has returned to, uh, I think, classical American politics. Although it is true that uh, his attitudes or his uh, expression changed a lot, but fundamental U.S. Uh, uh, I think uh, national interest doesn't change that much, and uh, so uh, I think. Uh, uh, U.S. is still needed and uh, looked upon as a leader uh, in this region, Asia-Pacific region. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you very much, and thank you for uh, Catherine Meenan, from the in member of the Institute, and thank you very much for your talk. It was most interesting. Could I ask two questions, with the chair, if the chairman will allow? One of which is the increase in Chinese naval uh, projection. Uh, firstly. What is your understanding of what threat the Chinese see? And secondly, what's the Japanese response to that uh, increase in naval power? And secondly, about North Korea, I mean, clearly it's impossible to understand or predict what is happening. But I'm just wondering how much intelligence is available about what happens in North Korea? Thank you. Uh, as for the first uh, Chinese uh uh, naval expansion. Uh, this is uh, very rapid, and uh, I think uh, they are trying to create uh, what they call blue water uh, navy, uh, uh, going out uh, into Asia Pacific region. And uh, I think the uh, Japan uh, has its limits because we have decided that uh, our military will be only on defensive defense, and we would not go into offensive defense. That means, in short, we don't try to have long-range bombers, long-range missile, we don't have aircraft carriers, we don't have nuclear weapons. That is what we have sort of tried to make uh, our 
Navy or Mil uh, Defense Agency. Now, under that condition, we are putting a lot of effort on, for example, submarine detection and those things, and depend heavily on United States deterrence for our defense. And I think uh, that kind of divisional uh, role will fundamentally uh, main, will be con uh, continued. However, uh, when Mr. Abe went to see Mr. Trump, they issued a joint press communique on February the 10th, and in that, uh, they agreed that they will uh, look at the uh, mission and role of uh, to defense. But I think the fundamental, the, there may be a little more Japan can do, but the fundamental role that Japan will limit itself to defensive defense will, I think, be maintained. Second, uh, so I think we have to depend much on the United States, but we will be uh, increasing our defense spending as well. Second, on intelligence of uh, North Korea, uh, as for uh, uh, the military move for missile testing or uh, nuclear testing, a lot can, I think, can be detected, I think, from satellite, but uh, the real internal relations, uh, how much uh, control Mr. Kim Jong-un has, or uh, are there some uh, rift between the uh, military and the party or whatever, it's uh, totally, I think, uh, predictable and uh, we, uh, uh, United States, no, no Japan really has any good information on that. It's a very uh, uh, sort of secluded society. In '94, when Kim Jong, uh, Kim Il Sung, the grandfather, died, many of the North Korean watchers thought that now North Korea itself is on. deathbed. Uh, in few years, it has to go. Uh, Kim, Mr. Kim Jong-il, uh, with uh, hairstyle and uh, high heel, and uh, sort of he look, didn't look so dignified, and people thought that, hey, this is the end of the dynasty. That time, I discussed with uh, our North Korean watchers uh, in the Japanese foreign ministry, and they said, Fujisaki-san, uh, no, uh, it, it doesn't happen. Many of the uh, American uh, uh, analysts say that uh, it's going to go, but uh, it doesn't happen. Uh, the reason, he said to me, is that it's such a well-controlled society that even a person would like to, to whisper to some others, this is uh, heard and he's going to be... Uh, found out and uh, whatever, so everyone's so scared and so uh, nothing will happen for 10 years, 20 years and he was darn right. So uh, uh, that means that we really don't know. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Fujisaki, for your presentation. Maeve Collins from the Department of Foreign Affairs. And my question is actually about Japan's economic diplomacy vis-a-vis -vis the US, because when uh, President Trump and Mr. Abe met, um, there was an announcement and some reports in the Japanese papers about an, an economic package that was being offered by Japan to the US, including, I think, some increase, I'm not quite clear on it, in FDI. Uh, and I think we, we would be interested in hearing a little more about that and what, what the strategy is. And also, uh, there is some forum for dialogue that has been set up, which I think is that Vice President Pence and uh, Deputy PM Asso are going to co-chair discussions on economic uh, matters, including, I presume, currency issues, which was what uh, Trump was most critical of, of Japan about uh, up, until, up until recently. So I'd like to hear your thoughts on that and where that might go. As you're visiting Ireland, you'll find that we in Ireland are very preoccupied by President Trump's proposed tax 
reforms. So if you have, if you have any Japanese perspective on the uh, proposed tax on reforms. To yeah. Irish level yet. 2.5% <laughs> so, difference, isn't that? Not quite, yes. <laughs> but we'd be very interested to know your view. Yes, uh, when uh, Mr. Abe went to uh, see Mr. Trump, uh, they agreed uh, to set up uh, 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 dialogue between uh, uh, two dialogues uh, uh, between Abe and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Aso, the Deputy Prime Minister, and Mr. Pence, uh, Vice President, and uh, I think it was very good because Mr. Pence uh, ha has a very uh, sort of uh, honorable place uh, in the administration. Second, because uh, he was uh, governor of Indiana, where Indiana has the uh, uh, 600 uh, foreign direct investment and 260 of that is from Japan and uh, it's the only state that Toyota uh, Honda uh, 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 has uh, the factory together in that uh, area. So uh, I think uh, it's uh, uh, very uh, important that they set up. And uh, on uh, April the uh, uh, 17th, 18th, they had a, uh, Mr. Pence came to Japan and uh, had a dialogue with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Aso and uh, Mr. Abe, and uh, they agreed that uh, they'll set up a uh, official dialogue and they'll meet again at the uh, high level as well. It, so this is the uh, dialogue, and in that uh, dialogue, uh, 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 Mr. Mr. Uh, Pence suggested that uh, 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 one uh, possibility is uh, that they would uh, establish some framework between uh, Japan and United States bilaterally, but uh, that's something they have to discuss and we cannot say that it's already FTA or whatever, but uh, we'll be starting to discuss some bilateral as well. Uh, but uh, Japan has also indicated that we'll pursue TPP. Uh, so uh, it, it's not everything, but uh, there are different views. Uh, uh, we will be discussing bilateral issues. We'll be uh, pursuing TPP and uh, we'll uh, continue to honor uh, WCO. As for uh, foreign direct investment, it's not uh, what uh, government can uh, do. It's a uh, uh, business society can do, but uh, Japan is interested in uh, promoting, uh, for example, uh, uh, high-speed railway and others, and uh, uh, Japanese uh, 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 banks, uh, 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 the uh, half government, official uh, government can uh, put some loans to those as well. And uh, we'll be uh, looking at those issues, but uh, just uh, dialogue has started it. But so uh, we cannot say what will happen here. But uh, yes, uh, I think it's uh, important that uh, Japan and the uh, United States will uh, try to uh, develop some relations in economic field. But that doesn't mean that we'll abandon our a view on uh, uh, multilateral trade or WTO. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Jackson. Um, it's Gorni Duty Pioneer Investments. Just on the TPP issue, um, does, would it not make sense to include China going forward in TPP? I think uh, first, uh, it's when. If it's China would like to do that or not, China has been promoting what they call, what we call RCEP, that is uh, ASEAN plus six, uh, China, Korea, Japan, India, uh, and not the uh, United States, Canada, or those countries. Uh, no, Australia, New Zealand as well. So. Uh, uh, that is what China has been more interested in. She, Mr. Xi Jinping has expressed, and that uh, has been, the idea has been there as well. Uh, if, if for China to be in TPP, it's China has to say they want to be in TPP. It's not that others would invite them in, and because the, it's a high hurdle they have to jump over. For example, when w they joined WTO, they had to negotiate 
a lot to get into WTO. And, uh, but that was good for China, and that's uh, the reason that China has developed so much. First, China has to make its uh, view, uh, decision, and if they express, uh, I think, uh, the 11 countries that are still in t uh, TPP uh, would uh, consider the candidacy and ask for some conditions uh, if they could meet, uh, because it's not only trade, but it's investment, uh, uh, government procurement and all those, and uh, some of the areas uh, are not that easy, like government procurement, where many of the uh, government uh, uh, corporations are the uh, are there in China. So, uh, uh, but uh, of course, uh, it's a possibility, and uh, I do not deny that. Uh, Ten uh, Fujisaki Sensei. So, I'm a Vietnamese student, I study in law and politics in Ireland. And as you know, that's my country is have, having this deal with China in South China Sea. And uh, my question is, a few years ago, Japan passed a new security law to allow Japan to exercise collective self-defense uh, in the case that Japan allies, such as the US, are under attack. And back to South China Sea issue, Japan said that Japan doesn't have any claim in South China Sea, but Japan has special interest in South China Sea and Vietnam and Japan is strategic partner. So whether Japan can be able to send its self-defensive force to defend its special interest in South China Sea and Vietnam? I will say two things. One is that uh, when we changed uh, this law that you referred to, yes, uh, it is collective self-defense, but the condition is that when Japan itself security is endangered. So it's collective, but if it's U.S. <coughs> is operating somewhere in Atlantic and which doesn't have any relations with Japan, we would not defend it. If the situation is uh, directly related to Japan's security, we will do that. That is the question, point one. Point two, as for South China Sea uh, issue, we have uh, supported uh, the decision of the arbitrary court saying uh, and uh, said that the uh, China and in international community has to honor uh, what uh, 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 International Arbitrary Court has decided. I think it was uh, a little sad to see China saying that's a crap. We don't regard it at all. Uh, because sometimes we get a very negative uh, decision at ICJ. Uh, but we don't if the decision is done by ICJ, we accept it as such. So, and uh, as for uh, relations with Philippines, uh, we've been uh, uh, trying to uh, uh, extend uh, help on uh, Coast Guard in Philippines where uh, ships uh, is extended to Philippines. This is the new uh, uh, situation which was not there a few years ago. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Uh, Niall Walsh, I'm a member of the Institute. I'm just wondering, Ambassador, if it's in the long-term interests of Japan to be so closely aligned with the United States. And perhaps um, because you're su so surprised that Trump sort of thanked Japan for accepting US forces, uh, maybe that's an aberration that the traditional view of the United States towards Japan is that it's an occupied country and that it's a colony. And the reason for your defensive defense policy is because it was imposed upon you by the United States after the Second World War. And when there are any military decisions going to be taken in your area, those decisions will not be taken in Tokyo, 
they will be taken in Washington, perhaps without any collaboration, or even informing Tokyo. So just we've discussed a lot of problem areas at the moment, a lot of problem issues, but in the long term, it cannot be in Japan's interests to be so closely aligned with the United States. I think uh, this is a very important point, and uh, as for the Japanese people, uh, I think about half of the people, it depends on the poll, but half the people think that uh, we should maintain the present uh, constitution and uh, present uh, mil uh, defense posture. About the, uh, the rest of the half thinks uh, in view of the situation happening around country, we have to rethink about it. But uh, as long as the United States seems credible, I think people think that uh, uh, in view of our relations with uh, other countries around the uh, region, we better keep the present uh, uh, posture. I don't know how long this can go on, but it uh, seems that uh, as what I've said about uh, Mr. Trump or Mr. Mattis or Mr. Tilson or Mr. Pence, uh, everyone is saying that they will uh, continue uh, to keep the the military commitment and uh, uh, today it is true that uh, the only country China and North Korea are watching is the United States. So uh, if we could use that uh, relations as our deterrence, I think that's a uh, the best solution. You're saying that in the long run uh, it may be uh, changing, uh, I don't know how long, but uh, we have to think uh, with this, how the situation develops. But as for the moment, I think uh, Japanese people are mostly, uh, well, some, some are divided, but uh, uh, many of them think that uh, we can uh, still continue our de dependence on the United States. That's how I look at it. Maybe I could um, put a point to you. I think that one of the uh, questions that underlies a number of uh, questions that are put and points that are made here and here is uh, the uh, position of uh, the new, more powerful China in the international system. And there, um, it seems to me that um, there are two possibilities as far as um, uh, the international alignment of China in trade and e economic matters is concerned. Uh, there is the regional uh, economic uh, cooperation proposal, which is uh, to some extent seen as a, a Chinese initiative, which many other countries in the region are interested in. And then there is the other one, which is TPP, which um, Donald Trump has renounced, but which you say uh, Japan uh, continues to uh, be committed to. Uh, if there is one striking thing about TPP, it is that it excludes China, which is uh, a very uh, notable uh, absence. Um, how do you see uh, the evolution of affairs against this background where there seem to be two competing paradigms in play? You see, uh, TPP was concluded uh, by New Zealand, Brunei, Singapore, and Chile, it was uh, four countries. And then US showed interest and joined. And then uh, after that, it really changed. So uh, Japan thought uh, we'll want to uh, come in uh, into that TPP. And we uh, realized that uh, in 2013, that was uh, almost uh, two or three years into already the very heated negotiations that U.S. was leading. So Japan was asked to clear many hurdles before joining the ne even negotiations. And then three years it took to conclude it. So you see, uh, I think there's some maybe uh, misunderstanding that China 
you said China was excluded. No, it's not excluded. It's that each country has to say that I want to be in it, and then we, it was not easy for Japan to make that decision. Uh, our uh, Democratic Party of Japan could not make decision because of uh, uh, we had to defend our agriculture, but Abe decided to jump into TPP negotiation. It was a very hard negotiation. So, uh, as I said before to the question that was made by the lady, uh, it's uh, not that China is excluded, it's China has to uh, make a decision if they want to be in it. Uh, uh, and I don't know uh, what is the thinking on the part of China, but uh, Japan does not exclude uh, RCEP as well. Uh, we are negotiating now free trade, free trade area uh, negotiations with uh, China, Korea, South Korea, and Japan as well. We are now negotiating with Europe. We are negotiating with many countries. The history, maybe, some of you know, TP, FTA, do you know how it started? It, when GATT was written in 1947, they made two exclusions <coughs> in Article 24. That was Customs Union and Free Trade Area. Free, uh, Customs Union was asked by Benelux and uh, Free Trade Area by Lebanon and Syria. And they didn't use it for almost uh, 50, 50 years. And then when 94, NAFTA was made between US, Canada, and it changed the whole situation. Everyone rushed to FTA. We we didn't because Japan is uh, wanted WTO to be the main pillar. But uh, because everyone is running and uh, Europe was expanded to 28 and all that, uh, we had to go. And in 2000, we started FTA with uh, Singapore. And then I was a negotiator, chief negotiator of Japan when I was a deputy foreign minister uh, for uh, Malaysia, Korea. Uh, Thailand and Philippines, and uh, it was a hard negotiations, but uh, as, except for Korea, we concluded all that. And uh, uh, we made many FTAs now. Uh, so uh, uh, it's not that uh, with what country is excluded to which, it's that when you are making FTA, you, are, you do show the interest and you join and you have to negotiate and come come to that. We, uh, I think we will uh, join any of those RCEP or FTOP, that's a whole uh, APEC area, a free trade area. Uh, we are trying to negotiate with others as well. It really was quite important because the integration and the enlarging EU had a good sense uh, that it is not a power complex within the European. It is the biggest trader and the largest and most successful trader, but not predicated on arms might or whatever. And that question was raised with Japan and Japanese interests. And it's quite interesting that you will be very familiar with what is now called the Economic Partnership Agreement, uh, the EU-Japan EPA. And this has really, I have been actively involved from one part of that. And it's very interesting that Japan had not been interested at the start, but in more recent times, there is a deep concern in Japan to find a mechanism that would be effectively economically palliative to Europe and would be effective in terms of the trade relationships. Now, I won't uh, speak too long, but it has <coughs> progressed where the interest is now being expressed by the Japanese side, by the Japanese representative groups. And within the last six months at the last EU Japan summit, an agreement was evident that the constraints that inhibit this integration or this agreement should be eliminated by the end of this year. That's quite different from what has happened up to now. But in the European arena, there's, of course, 
uh, a whole lot of differing agendas now are rising up. But nevertheless, this relationship with the Japanese side is held in very high regard in business Europe, largely because of the move on the Japan side of wanting to develop this mechanism, the EPA mechanism. It will be interesting to hear your comment on this. Uh, Japan uh, would like to uh, develop, uh, as you say, sir, uh, EPA uh, with uh, Europe, and I thought that uh, we can come to agreement uh, a lot easier, a lot uh, quicker, but it's taking time. But uh, in view of uh, what's happening with the United States, I think we should conclude it very quickly as well and uh, try to show that uh, we are committed to these uh, EPAs. Uh, yes, I agree that that's very important, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador Fujisaki. Um, I think you have given us uh, uh, a tour d'horizon of the whole Asia-Pacific uh, region and the um, position of Japan, which is uh, a crucial position in the whole uh, Asia-Pacific region. Um, I know that uh, this is Golden Week in Japan. Uh, Golden Week is uh, a very particular time in Japan. I think it's a week in which there are three or four public holidays and, uh, during which many Japanese uh, decide to um, goof off, let's say, um, to do something else. Today is Constitution Day in Japan, which is, I think, the central holiday of Golden Week. So we appreciate very much that you took the time during such uh, a holiday period to come and talk to us. Thank you very much.